we will only need one brush, a glass of water, three, four watercolors, and about an hour of time to paint these beautiful orchids. Let me show you how. Hi, my name is Anna. If we haven't met, welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to take you step by step through this watercolor tutorial, which is actually quite simple, very beginner friendly. So for those of you who are just starting your watercolor journey, this will be a great practice. We will use a limited palette, simple techniques, so very stress free, fun process with a beautiful result in the end. So grab the reference photo from the Unsplash website. I left the link to this photo in the video description below. And before we start, let me show you the supplies I've used. I will be painting on Windsor Newton paper, just a small block, seven by nine inches. Super convenient because you don't need to stretch your watercolor paper when you have a block. Just paint on the top sheet and then you can peel it off when it's done. I just love blocks. The brush I am going to use is this new Professional Round Synthetic Sable from Windsor Newton. Because of the fine tip, I'll be able to do the entire painting with just this one brush in size 6. But you can also add a smaller brush for those fine details in the center of the flower. We have a very limited palette today. I'm going to use Windsor Newton watercolors and oh, their packaging is always amazing. These look like little candies. The main pigment uh, you will need is violet and I'm using quinacridone violet. We will mix this base pigment with a lot of water and occasionally a little bit of blue to add shadows and some visual interest. I will be using Windsor Blue Red Shade for my blue. For the inside of each orchid, I will be using this gorgeous gold ochre. I just tried it for the first time this weekend and uh, I was so surprised because ochre is not what I would consider my go-to for botanicals. It's usually pretty dull for my liking, but this one has a hint of gold and maybe even some peachy sort of orangey undertones. It's actually very vibrant for an ochre and um, it ended up being a perfect complement to my violet. Those three are the main pigments and if you want to add some hints of pink, I'll use a warm scarlet lake and a cool opera pink. You can do that, but it's not necessary. And for the green, you can easily mix your own using our blue and ochre or use any of your favorites. Now let's get started. Step one, we're going to paint the first wash of watercolor and in the end of the step our painting will look something like this. Then afterwards in step two and three we will add the details and the shadows. This process is called glazing, meaning adding layers of watercolor to achieve depth. If you want to see a more advanced glazing technique, I'll link a tutorial on that topic in the video description and also in the card above. But today we're keeping it simple, just two or three layers. And I'm going to paint the front petals of the orchid first with a very light mixture of quinacridone violet, lots of water, super transparent, even layer of color, almost no variation in value. Later on, we will come back and add a few more layers on top here to add depth. But for now, let's just focus on covering the entire area of this, these petals. This layer will dry out quickly, so no time to add any other colors wet on wet, but I will occasionally add a little bit of blue into my mixture. Maybe also a little bit of pink at the very base right here. Okay, now let's do the same thing here on top. I'm going to paint the entire surface area of these petals. Notice that I'm not concerned about the overlap just covering the petal shapes with my violet blue mixture, making sure it's quite even, not too much water, just enough to continue the smooth coverage. We will come back later and add some details to ensure that each petal has its own distinctive value and details. By the way, I just read the most beautiful description of a violet in the recent Windsor Newton newsletter. Just listen to this. So violet sits on the very edge of the visible rainbow spectrum, after which we find ultraviolet, which is invisible to most humans, 
perhaps because of our inability to visibly perceive beyond violet, it is sometimes the color that represents the fringe or the edge of knowledge. How lovely is that? I'm really into this violet quinacridone and I'm working on several paintings at the moment using this pigment. So you will see it come up more and more on this channel in the upcoming weeks. Okay, back to the painting. I'm going to add a little bit of gold ochre here at the base as we get closer to the center. Now let me show you an example of how we're going to add these details later on in step two and three. Look at this front facing petal. It's dry now so we can add some detail with the same mixture very lightly. I'm going to just add another layer but only on the shadow area keeping a close look at my reference photo and just following what I see. So this is just an example of this layering or glazing. Let's come back to this later. Now let's do the first layer of color on these beautiful central parts that I believe they're called the lips of the orchid. I may be wrong, but I know I can always rely on you, my followers, for letting me know the correct names of flowers and different parts of plants, so thank you. I hope I named it correctly. And the way we're going to do this is mainly light gold ochre throughout with a bit of pink, if you want, in the center and some warm Windsor blue on the edges. This is just a start an underpainting layer and we will follow of course later on with some more vibrant violet. But for now let it dry and let's do the same thing on this flower on the left. Maybe adding some violet on the edge. The last thing we have to do in this first layer is this background flower facing away. And you know if you watched any of my previous tutorials, I always say that um, to set something back visually, the easiest thing to do is to add a little bit of blue just to cool it off. So let's add more blue to our violet mixture and overall make it a bit more saturated, not too much, and paint those petals facing away from us. I want to make that folded part really dark so I will drop some more concentrated blue and violet there. In step two, we're going to add some more color, but only after the first layer is dry. So we're going to do this very selectively though, only in some areas. So in the end, it will look like this. And your mixture of pigments will be just slightly more saturated, especially in the center, more violet there and on the flowers that are facing away, a little bit more blue there. When this flower is dry, we can proceed right away to our second step. And why don't we start with that last flower we painted in our first layer? I'm just going to look at the way the shadows appear in the reference photo and gently put down a new layer of color only on those areas that I want to make a little bit darker and as those shadows are drying I'm just adding a bit more concentrated pigment here and there so at the end of step two our flower will look like this you can see that our mixture of pigments in the second step is a bit more saturated especially in the center we'll be putting in more violet and on the flowers facing away, a bit more blue. Now let's do the second layer on the orchid lips so you can go much more saturated at this point and use a combination of blue and violet throughout. Just paint those thin lines as you get closer to the center. Just paint those thin lines, those veins with the tip of your brush. You can use the same brush or switch to a smaller brush like size zero or even double zero to make it easier. As you can see, I reduced the number of those purple veins significantly just to make it easier on myself since 
my paper is very small, seven by nine. If you're painting on a larger sheet of paper, you can try to add more. Now let's repeat the same process on this other orchid facing us. Again, my purple here is much more saturated and I'm adding a little bit of warm blue into it. Now let's add another layer of a violet blue mixture, but only on the petals of that orchid behind. I'm going to leave the front flower untouched. See how suddenly our front facing flower is starting to stand out more. This is exactly what we want. Notice that uh, my watercolor mixture has a lot more blue this time. So the ratio of blue to violet changes and you can play around with this depending on how you see the reference photo. But generally I'm gonna keep the petals that are further away a bit darker and more blue. For this front facing petal, I'm using a much lighter violet and only covering the shadow areas. Maybe a few grooves on the petals. Very few details, but enough to draw attention. So the more details we add, the closer the petal will appear. I will add more color to this flower here again and back to the front facing flower, much lighter mixture, a few details with the tip of my brush. Another petal, there's a very strong shadow there. I will use more blue on the shadow and maybe less blue and more violet at the base of the petal. So we have a nice transition from blue shadows to more saturated violet at the base and and also in the center of the flower. And finally, I'll just add a little bit more pigment on that petal tip. Now I want to go over the orchids we just painted and add a third layer of color. Again, building more definition with a slightly more saturated mixture. I'm going to look at my reference photo and now focus on those smaller shadows and the thin and the thin lines on each petal. Of course, I'm going to add a lot more detail on the orchid lip in the center using much more saturated violet. And notice that I will only be covering this smaller area, adding a few more lines with the tip of my brush. From here, let's do the second layer of light violet and blue on this last flower. Larger shadows, some details on the petals. And of course, I'm going all the way to the center and adding saturated violet and blue on that beautiful part of the flower in the middle. Okay, our orchids are pretty much done. We've built some very nice definition and a sense of volume using only two, in some cases, three layers of color. And at this point you can stop, or if you want, you can continue with me and I will simply go over the entire painting with the tip of my brush, adding some finishing touches before doing the stem. So in the end, it will look like this. What I feel is important at this point, as I mentioned before, is to have enough smaller details on the front facing flowers as they really need to draw attention. So I will add a few more smaller shadows, perhaps some outlines with the tip of my brush here and there, and mostly just focusing on these large petals at the front. It's important not to overdo it, of course, and I'm just looking at the reference photo and making sure that my interpretation is balanced and my painting reflects sort of the overall impression that you get in the original photo and the overall balance of light and shadow. Now let's paint the stem very subtle. As you can see, I'm adding a lot of the same pigments, just mixing that warm blue and uh, yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of violet to make some shadows that blend with the petals. 
Using the same violet, of course, will help us with making that stem fit in visually. You've probably heard this before. Greens straight from the tube never really work. They never really look natural enough. So always try to mix them with cooler and warmer pigments from other areas of the spectrum. And I'm working on an in-depth tutorial on that topic right now. So you can be on the lookout for that soon. I think the stem is done. And now let me just add a little bit of color on the petal tips here and here. So they look really sharp against the white background. And uh, as I'm finishing this off, I just wanted to say a big thank you to Windsor Newton who generously provided these materials for me to test as part of the Windsor Newton Made for Every Moment Challenge, which by the way, everyone can participate in on Instagram for a chance to win some great things from uh, Windsor Newton. And uh, I will leave the details of this watercolor challenge below in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Have a wonderful week and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.